Deciding where to invest your money can be tough, especially when you're looking at exchange-traded funds like SEHD and QQQ. With $100,000 on the table, the decision becomes even more critical. Today, we'll talk about the two popular ETFs, SCHD and QQQ. I'll show you how they work and how risky they are. Then we'll compare them to help John decide which one might be better for his $100,000. Finally, I'll show you a long-term projection for that $100,000 investment. The difference between the two ETFs is significant. Both could potentially make you a millionaire, but one might even push you over $10 million, while the other might stay just below that mark. Okay, we've just scratched the surface here. Now it's time to really get to know what makes these ETFs tick. Here's a bit of background on the two ETFs. SCHD, or Schwab's U.S. Dividend Equity ETF, follows a bunch of U.S. companies that regularly pay out dividends. It's popular among folks who like getting dividends and want their investment to grow over time. On the other hand, there's QQQ, or Invesco QQQ Trust Series. It tracks the NASDAQ 100 index, which includes big companies listed on the NASDAQ. QQQ is all about tech companies, and it's for people who believe in the power of technology to make big returns. Tech companies tend to grow fast and bring in lots of profits, so QQQ gives you a piece of that action. Regarding diversification, we want many different sectors and different stocks in different industries to make money as safely and reliably as possible. For SCHD, we have a good amount of diversification with over 100 holdings and many sectors pretty evenly distributed among each other, with financials, healthcare, and consumer defensive being the top three. This means that if one sector experiences a downturn, the impact on the overall portfolio is cushioned by the others. Moving on to QQQ, it also has over 100 holdings, but there's a significant emphasis on the technology sector which accounts for about 50% of the fund's allocation. This concentration can lead to a higher volatility since the fund's performance is heavily reliant on the tech industry. While this could mean higher returns when the tech sector is booming, it also poses a greater risk if the tech sector were to decline. Let's talk about something important that affects your returns, the expense ratio. It's the fee that can eat into your profits without you realizing it. Some ETFs charge high fees, especially alternative ones. But for many funds, the fees are usually acceptable for what they offer. The trouble starts when you're paying a lot more than you should for a similar ETF. For example, let's look at two ETFs, FVD and SCHD. They both focus on U.S. stocks that pay good dividends and are well diversified. But FVD charges 0.65% in fees, while SCHD charges just 0.06%. There's no need to pay more for FVD when SCHD offers almost the same thing for much less. Now, for QQQ, it's a bit different. Its expense ratio is 0.2%, which is competitive considering its popularity and performance. Let's compare it to another ETF. XLK, which also tracks the technology sector. XLK's expense ratio is slightly lower at 0.13%. However, QQQ includes companies from other sectors like retail and biotech, which XLK doesn't have. This broader mix can sometimes justify paying a little bit more for QQQ if you want exposure to a wider range of industries. So basically, it's a trade-off between QQQ, high expense ratio and good returns, and SCHD, low expense ratio with steady returns. It's up to your personal preference. Now remember, in the end, I'll show you how these two ETFs stack up against each other with a $100,000 investment, and one has the upper hand over the other, potentially crossing the $10 million portfolio valuation. Now, before we dive into the comparison, there are a couple of important things to consider for both ETFs, standard deviation and a Seeking Alpha scorecard. In simple terms, a higher standard deviation means more ups and downs in stock returns, while a lower standard deviation means more stable returns. 
So the ETF with the highest standard deviation is more volatile, which could lead to big gains but also big losses. Currently, SCHD has the lowest standard deviation, making it less risky, while QQQ has the highest, making it more volatile due to its heavy focus on the tech sector. Now let's check out the Seeking Alpha scorecards for risk. QQQ gets a C- score because of its high annualized volatility, standard deviation, and exposure to its top 10 holdings. On the other hand, SCHD gets a B- score for its low standard deviation and volatility, but it also has high exposure to its top 10 holdings. So these factors give us some insights into the risk levels of both ETFs before we compare them further. Next, we have a backtest for both of these ETFs' performance separately since 2010, with dividends reinvested and $100,000 invested as well. This test is used for seeing how well a stock or an ETF is done by seeing how it would play out using historical data. Putting in the numbers of $100,000 as the initial amount, start year to be 2010, and putting the assets at 100%, we can see the best year is awarded to QQQ with a 54% return. The ETF that performed the best in its worst year performance is SCHD at only a 5.56% drop. Now let's see the ETF that gives the best returns with $100,000 invested in 2010 with dividends reinvested. Because the goal of any investor should be achieving the highest return possible, to have more money in retirement, and overall, to have enough money to live the life of your dreams. We can see that QQQ gave the highest returns of nearly a million from $100,000 invested since 2010. It also has the highest compounded annual returns. That means QQQ wins this one, but there is risk to it. But does that mean it's better than SCHD in the future as well? In the end, I'll show you how these two ETFs stack up against each other with a $100,000 investment and which one potentially crosses the $10 million portfolio valuation. Finally, let's talk about risk. Every investor has their own level of risk they're comfortable with. Matching an ETF to that level is important as it helps avoid taking unnecessary risks. There are three ways to measure an ETF's risk level. One, volatility. This is how much the ETF's value goes up and down over time. Two, drawdowns. These are the declines in the ETF's value from its peak to its lowest point. And three, concentration. This is about how much of the ETF is invested in one type of stock or industry. Take Invesco QQQ Trust, for example. It had an impressive historical performance, but it's also been quite volatile. Over the past 20 years, QQQ's volatility has been 23% higher than Vanguard S&P 500 ETF, or VOO, and its drawdowns have been steeper too. QQQ puts 50% of its portfolio into tech stocks, much more than SCHD's 8.7%. This means QQQ investors are more exposed to the ups and downs of the tech industry, which can be risky. On the other hand, index ETFs like SCHD might not have the same flashy returns, but they certainly do a better job of managing risk. SCHD might be a more conservative option with lower volatility and smaller drawdowns. It's more balanced, spreading out investments across different industries, which helps reduce the risk of big losses if one industry goes down. So, while QQQ might offer high potential returns, it also comes with higher risk. SCHD, on the other hand, might not have the same excitement, but it offers a steadier performance with lower risk. Now, finally, which one is better? We can find that out by a side-by-side -side comparison of John's $100,000 investment in both QQQ and SCHD. For this, we have to look at the numbers from the past decade of both ETFs. There are three figures we need – average share price appreciation, average dividend yield, and average dividend growth rate. If John puts all his money in SCHD, whose average share price appreciation is 8.21%, with a current dividend yield of 3.35% and average dividend growth rate of 10.87%, 
In the first year, John's investment in SCHD is projected to grow to $111,560. After 10 years, it's expected to triple to $310,320. Give it another 10 years, and in 20 years, John's investment will have reached $1,065,134 in valuation, paying $51,667 in annual dividends. Now for the long game. 30 years down the road, John's initial investment in SCHD has the potential to reach $4,161,719 paying an annual dividend of $258,710, or roughly $21,559 monthly. Over 30 years, this ETF has the potential to add $4,061,719 to John's initial investment, with $2,329,943 from stock growth and $1,731,776 from reinvested dividends. Okay, that's SCHD, but what about QQQ? If John shifts his cash here, with an average share price appreciation of 18.09%, current dividend yield of 0.59%, and an average dividend growth rate of 9.93%, John's $100,000 in QQQ after the first year is projected to reach $118,680. After 10 years, it's projected to grow to $234,565. In 20 years, John's investment will have increased to $2,923,978. Compared to SCHD, QQQ growth in portfolio value is happening mainly because of capital appreciation. Now check this out. In 30 years, John's initial investment has the potential to reach $15,519,638, paying an annual dividend of $6,565. Over 30 years, QQQ has the potential to add $15,419,638 to John's initial investment, with $15,343,467 attributed to stock growth and a significant $76,171 from reinvested dividends. So here's the deal. SCHD is your go-to for steady growth and reliable dividends. It's like the tortoise in the race, slow and steady, but it gets you there with a hefty dividend payout. On the flip side, QQQ is the hare, racing ahead with massive capital appreciation. If you're playing the long game, QQQ might just cross the finish line with a bigger pot of gold. Question: Want to reach a $10 million valuation that also pays over $200,000 in dividends? Click the video on the screen.